moving about in the world and moving the world around you. Now, in a normal uh, painting environment, we would have a canvas and we're painting within that canvas. Here in Tilt Brush, we can paint anywhere else and we can even walk around the room and paint over here and paint over there and take advantage of the environment. Now, I'm lucky here that I have a whole big room I can walk around, but many people uh, don't have the luxury of space or some people don't have the luxury of mobility and they need to do more to the world than they might be able to find in arm's reach. So Tilt Brush gives us the tool to manipulate the world around us or to change our position in the world so we can work on larger environmental pieces rather than just small static pieces right in front of you. As an example, you can see I've got my letter A here. Letter B is actually farther back behind us over here. Here's letter B. And if I need to, I can move around in the world between these places. Now, Tilt Brush has two main ways to do this. The first way is very straightforward. It's actually using one of our utility tools. So I'm going to switch my controller to the utility selection. And the one with the feet, teleport. This is the guy that lets you move around within the space. So I'm going to click on teleport. And now my paintbrush has this thing attached to it. It's a dotted line ending in feet. And as I move my mouse around, uh, my brush around, it places those feet. Wherever you click, it moves you to that location. So I'm going to step over here, and as I click forwards, you can see the letters moving behind me. As I click to the side, you can see we move in that direction. Or to this side, we move in that direction each time you click. Now it does have a limited range, so you can see I can't send that feet miles away. But each time I click, I step in that direction. When you turn the teleporter off, it puts your original tool back in hand. So I'm going to draw a circle, step forward, draw something else, step forward, draw something else, step forward. And you can move around the space, move around the environment using these mouse clicks with your teleporter. Now it is horizontal only. I can't use the teleporter to teleport up. It doesn't let me do that. It's only for horizontal type of movement. So if I want to go up and down, maybe I want to draw a 50-foot statue, we will need the other form of movement. What will be important is we will be combining the two. So not only will we be teleporting, but we'll be using these other movement tools together to really get around in a big space. Now that I've moved around a lot, I'd like to be able to get back to where I was, all these pieces around me. So if I hold down either grip, either hand grip, and then thumb press, it takes you back to your starting point. Original size, original location. Here's my A, B behind me, and there's the other pieces I've been drawing. So with a teleporter, it's a matter of click where you want the feet to take you. And here I am next to this other big piece. So teleporter tool, on or off, brush, teleport, back to brush. Teleport tool to get around in the world. Now the other way to get around, we looked at this in the controller class, and you'll also notice me doing it almost out of habit now, is when you use both grips, you'll be able to grip the world. So as I move my grips, you can see it moving the world behind me. Likewise, with these grips, you'll notice it puts a little picture between my hands as long as I've got it gripped. Right now, that picture looks like an elephant. That's to imply I've stretched myself as big as an elephant. So I'm going to use my reset to go back to square one. Here's the letter A. I'm going to grip as I spread my hands farther apart, things get bigger. As I bring them closer together, things get smaller. I'm now elephant-sized, bigger than the letters. I'm now dinosaur-sized. I've got these little tiny letters. So anything I draw now is going to seem really big when I go back to normal size. Here is the larger shape, and as I move this, you can see it's a really big shape behind me. 
as opposed to my original ABC. So that sense of changing scale, one way I could use this with the teleporter is I'm going to make myself dinosaur scale and now take giant teleport steps at this large scale. I'm going to draw something big, like a dinosaur, lovely dinosaur. When I go back to my original set, we can see the dinosaur, see if I can find him on your screen, way off in the distance. There he is! He is very far away. I can't reach him because I had all these teleport steps between me and it. So if you change your scale, those teleportation movements become a lot larger steps. Same with anything else. If I put myself to a very small scale, so if I go the other way, I'm now the size of a squirrel. I've got this gigantic, you can't even see it on, fitting on screen anymore, just bits and pieces, but I've got this gigantic dinosaur behind me. If I was to teleport, I'm taking little tiny baby steps in that direction. So it's a combination of my scale tool. I'll get myself really big so I can take big teleportation steps. Back to center. And there's the dinosaur very far in the distance. Doesn't show up on my screen. Hopefully he shows up. There it is between the B and the A. The other thing we can do with that besides just scale, as you notice, is rotate the world or even slide the world in different directions. So here's a case where I'm going to get back to my normal drawing tool. So I was talking about a tall statue. I'm just going to draw the base of it, or in this case a ladder, and then move the world down so I'm at the top of the ladder. And draw the next set of rungs. Move it down, draw the next set of rungs. Move it down. You can't see on the camera at this point, but I can look down about 20 feet and see about 20 feet of ladder below me. So when I go back to normal, here's the base of the ladder. I'm going to move us farther and farther away, and you can see it's actually a very tall ladder. Each of those steps of moving it down added another set on top. So the sense of scale, not only is it affected by our large size movements, but it allows us to draw on a different scale as well. You can make a city-sized city. It may take a while, but all we need to do to get started is set ourselves to the dinosaur size and now when we draw some skyscrapers, when we go back to normal scale, they're going to be skyscraper sized. So this affects the whole environment, not just one piece at a time. So as I move around, I'm moving towards the ladder. It's not the ladder moving towards me as a separate piece. It's the whole world moving around. Recenter. Now I'm back next to my letter A. Here's the base of the ladder, etc., etc. So moving around in the environment, it's a combination of the teleport tool to move horizontally very quickly, and then using the two-fisted grab to allow you to move vertically, to rotate, to slide, so I could do the classic uh, Simon in the purple crayon and start drawing. And as I draw, just keep moving things along sideways, so as I keep drawing, it keeps moving sideways, and I keep drawing, and it keeps moving sideways, and I keep drawing, and it keeps moving sideways. And now I've got this whole long line of a picture as I move the world around. Scale with your grip, as well as moving the world with your grip to draw larger and larger environmental pieces. Even if I'm just drawing a static small piece, I could use dinosaur scale to draw the structure then go down to squirrel scale with a fine brush and draw little details so that the final picture is a combination of this object covered with fine scripting or whatever your inspiration happens to be. So moving around in the world teleport or moving the world around you with a two-handed grip. Either hand, grip and thumb trigger, recenter back in the world. The final note about moving around, especially up and down, 
Some of the environments to paint in, you'll notice I'm in a blank white room, but every once in a while we might have a class in the standard environment type of room like this. Now with some rooms, some environments, you'll actually have floor space. If you actually have floor space, you'll notice you can't actually draw underneath the floor. It is a hard bottom to your world. So if you want to be able to draw infinitely above and down, some of the tilt brush settings may have an actual hard floor built into that setting. So now when I recenter, I've got these things coming up out of the ground, but I can't get any root system or anything down below the ground. So that's really the only limitation. If you're using any other type of environment, well not any, but many of the other environment types, don't technically have a floor. So I can go down, let's get back to my pen here, draw down, move the world up, draw down, move the world up, draw down, move the world up. So whereas my ladder went all the way up into the sky, my rope is going 60 feet underground. So if I can find out where I drew that guy, it's, it's way off the distance. But this is what I mean about an environment with no limitations versus an environment with floor. That's just going to be when you start your image, what's the world you're going to do in, what are the limitations in that world. But this is how you get around in a large picture, either teleport horizontally or move the world to your preference. That's our tilt brush. That's anything we want to do. So I can go in and I can start writing and any size, any shape, we're going to move it around. The whole world goes together. In later classes, we'll actually grab an individual piece and manipulate that one individual piece. But otherwise, it's just moving the whole world. Unless we can do pivoting and moving, I can't actually tilt and tilt brush, but we won't worry about that. So thank you for joining us for this particular episode. We're all about moving the world here. So feel free to join us each week. We're gonna try to do a different topic covering all of the basics of tilt brush going all the way through the advanced stuff, bringing in outside sources, uh, bringing in and exporting your own models, that type of thing. So hopefully you'll be able to join us uh, and see us every week. Uh, we'll look forward to doing this and you guys have a good one.